Hi, and today's read aloud is Sophie's Masterpiece by Eileen Spinelli, illustrations by Jane Dyer. Today's themes are creativity and persistence. And today's question is, have you ever made something? So sit back, relax, and enjoy Sophie's Masterpiece by Eileen Spinelli. Sophie's Masterpiece, A Spider's Tale. Sophie was no ordinary house spider. Sophie was an artist. She spun webs more wondrous than anyone and had anyone had ever seen. Her playmates called her incredible. Her mama was proud. Someday they said, she is going to spin a masterpiece. When Sophie arrived at that age when a young spider must strike out on her own, she moved into Beekman's boarding house. The first thing she did was look around. She saw dull green walls, faded rugs, and old window shades. The place cried out for her talents. Sophie set to work. Her first project was to weave a web of curtains for Beekman's front parlor. Day after day, she whizzed along, blending a gold thread of sun into her silk. I love that illustration. Jane Dyer does a beautiful job with these illustrations. <gasps> Wait for this one. <gasps> ah! Then one day the landlady noticed her and screamed, I'll have no spiders in my parlor. She swatted at Sophie with a dust rag. Sophie knew when she wasn't wanted, and she scampered across the wall and up the stairs into the tugboat captain's closet. When she finally settled down, she saw, she looked around and saw nothing but gray. Gray shirts, gray pants, gray sweaters. The captain needs a new suit, Sophie decided. Something bright, blue, like sky. So she began to spin patiently, a sleeve, a collar, one day, the tugboat captain caught Sophie at work. He screeched, ah, a spider! And then he climbed onto the windowsill and out to the roof. Sophie did not want anyone falling off the roof on her account, so she scuttered out of the closet down the hall and into the cook's bedroom slipper. It's surprising me that he was so fearful of the spider that he went out there. It's not a safe choice. But it seems to me that Sophie's choice to go into a bedroom slipper also doesn't seem like a very safe choice. Cook's bedroom slippers were patched and dirty. I'll spin the cook a new pair of slippers, she thought. After I rest a bit. No sooner had Sophie snuggled into the toe than she was being flung onto the floor. Was it an earthquake? No. It was Cook, who had shaken Sophie up. Yuck, scowled Cook. Look at that ugly, disgusting spider. Sophie's feelings were hurt. With great dignity, she journeyed across the rug and under Cook's door. She made the long, long climb up the steep, steep stairs to the third floor where a young woman lived. Wearily, Sophie slipped into the young woman's knitting basket and fell asleep. By this time, many spider years had passed. Sophie was older. She only had energy to spin a few small things for herself, a tiny rose pattern case for her pillow, eight colorful socks to keep her legs warm, but mostly she slept. Can you see the colorful socks on, the, on her? All hidden in the, the spools of yarn. Then one day the young woman discovered Sophie. Oh no, thought Sophie, close to tears. She knew she didn't have the strength for any more journeys, but the young woman did not swat Sophie with a dust rag. She did not climb on the roof. She did not say Sophie was ugly. She simply smiled. And without disturbing Sophie in the least, the young woman picked up her needle and yarn. Sophie watched as the young woman knitted day after day. Booties, cried Sophie. The young woman was going to have a baby. After the booties were finished, the young woman knitted a baby sweater and then the yarn was gone. The young woman did not have enough money to buy yarn for a baby blanket. Never mind, the old landlord lady told her. There's an old brown quilt at the hall closet. Your baby can use that. 
Sophie had seen that quilt. It was scratchy and drab, not fit for a baby. I wonder what she's going to do. Do you have a prediction? Do you think you know what she's going to do? Let's see. Sophie herself knew the answer. She would have to spin a blanket herself. In her younger days, this would not have been a problem, but Sophie had grown older, frail and weak. The baby was due any day. Could Sophie complete the blanket in time? She climbed out of the yarn basket and traveled to the wide windowsill. Strands of moonlight fell into the room. Excellent. She thought, I'll, I'll weave those strands into the baby's blanket. Some starlight too. Sophie began. And as she spun, new ideas came to her. She worked them into the blanket. Snippets of fragrant pine, wisps of night, old lullabies, playful snowflakes. Sophie spun without blinking or eating or sleeping. She was never more exhausted or determined. On and on she spun. She was down in the farthest corner of the blanket when she heard the cry of the young woman's newborn baby. And there on the farthest corner is where Sophie wove into the blanket her very own heart. That night, as the young woman was about to cover her infant with the landlady's quilt, Something on the windowsill caught her eye. It was a blanket, so soft, so beautiful as to be fit for a prince. The young woman knew this was no ordinary blanket. She placed it with love and wonderment around her sleeping baby and went to sleep herself with her hand upon the little spinner's last spinning. Sophie's masterpiece. The I love that book. What a beautiful, beautiful story. So for today's activity, I want you to create something. It can be anything. Just like Sophie tried to create so many different things, I want you to try to create. So it can be art, it can be a sculpture, it can even be a thing out of Legos or maybe even a cardboard box. So let's get creative. Grab whatever tools it is you need and create something. Have your parents take a picture of it and they can send it to me at thegivingprojectforchildren at gmail.com or post it on social media and tag us in it. I would love to see these pictures. So thank you so much for sharing today's book with me, Sophie's Masterpiece, and I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Let's continue to develop our love of reading together. Till next time.